Welcome to the audio version of the Conversation Starter Kit, a useful tool to help people talk with family members and loved ones about their wishes regarding end-of-life care. It will be read by Ellen Goodman, founder of The Conversation Project. The Conversation Starter Kit is available for download for free on our website, theconversationproject.org. For those of you who like to listen, Ellen will read the starter kit right through from start to finish. You might want to read the kit while you listen to Ellen, or just sit back and listen and return to the kit and fill in your answers later. Your Conversation Starter Kit When it comes to end-of-life care, Talking Matters Created by The Conversation Project and the Institute for Healthcare Improvement How to Use the Starter Kit This starter kit doesn't answer every question, but it will help you get your thoughts together and then have the conversation with your loved ones. You can use it whether you are getting ready to tell someone else what you want or you want to help someone else get ready to share their wishes. Take your time. This kit is not meant to be completed in one sitting. It's meant to be completed as you need it throughout many conversations. Why Talking Matters Sharing your wishes for end-of-life care can bring you closer to the people you love. It's critically important, and you can do it. Consider the facts. 90% of people say that talking with their loved ones about end-of-life care is important, yet only 27% have actually done it. 60% of people say that making sure their family is not burdened by tough decisions is extremely important, yet 56% have not communicated their end-of-life wishes. 80% of people say that if seriously ill, they would want to talk to their doctor about wishes for medical treatment toward the end of their life. Yet, only 7% report having had this conversation with their doctor. 82% of people say it's important to put their wishes in writing, yet only 23% have actually done so. One conversation can make all the difference. Step one, get ready. You will have many questions as you get ready for the conversation. Here are two to help you get started. What do you need to think about or do before you feel ready to have the conversation? Do you have any particular concerns that you want to be sure to talk about? For example, making sure finances are in order or making sure a particular family member is taken care of. Remember, you don't need to have the conversation just yet. It's okay to just start thinking about it. You can start out by writing a letter to yourself, a loved one, or a friend. You might consider having a practice conversation with a friend. Having the conversation may reveal that you and your loved ones disagree. That's okay. It's important to simply know this and to continue talking about it now, not during a medical crisis. Having the conversation isn't just a one-time thing. It's the first in a series of conversations over time. Step two, get set. What's most important to you as you think about how you want to live at the end of your life? What do you value most? Thinking about this will help you get ready to have the conversation. Now finish this sentence. What matters to me at the end of life is, for example, being able to recognize my children, being in the hospital with excellent nursing care, being able to say goodbye to the ones I love. Sharing your what matters to me statement with your loved ones could be a big help down the road. It could help them communicate to your doctor what abilities are most important to you, what's worth pursuing treatment for, and what isn't. Where I Stand Scales You can use the following scales to figure out how you want your end-of-life care to be. For each sentence, think about your preference along a scale from 1 to 5. 
As a patient, I'd like to know, one, only the basics about my condition and my treatment. Five, all the details about my condition and my treatment. As doctors treat me, I would like, one, my doctors to do what they think is best. Five, to have a say in every decision. If I had a terminal illness, I would prefer to, one, not know how quickly it is progressing. Five, know my doctor's best estimation for how long I have to live. Think about your answers. What kind of role do you want to have in the decision-making process? How long do you want to receive medical care? One, indefinitely, no matter how uncomfortable treatments are. Five, quality of life is more important to me than quantity. What are your concerns about treatment? One, I'm worried that I won't get enough care. Five, I'm worried that I'll get overly aggressive care. What are your preferences about where you want to be? One, I wouldn't mind spending my last days in a healthcare facility. Five, I want to spend my last days at home. Think about your answers. What do you notice about the kind of care you want to receive? How involved do you want your loved ones to be? One, I want my loved ones to do exactly what I've said, even if it makes them a little uncomfortable. Five, I want my loved ones to do what brings them peace, even if it goes against what I've said. When it comes to your privacy, one, when the time comes, I want to be alone. Five, I want to be surrounded by my loved ones. When it comes to sharing information, one, I don't want my loved ones to know everything about my health. Five, I'm comfortable with those close to me knowing everything about my health. Think about your answers. What role do you want your loved ones to play? Do you think that your loved ones know what you want? Or do you think they have no idea? What do you feel are the three most important things that you want your friends, family, and or doctors to understand about your wishes and preferences for end-of-life care? Step three, go. When you're ready to have the conversation, think about the basics. Who do you want to talk to? Mom, dad, children, partner or spouse, sister or brother, faith leader, friend, doctor, caregiver, other? When would be a good time to talk? The next holiday, before my child goes to college, before my next trip, before I get sick again? Before the baby arrives, the next time I visit my parents or adult children, at the next family gathering, other. Where would you feel comfortable talking? At the kitchen table, at a favorite restaurant, in the car, on a walk, sitting in a park, at my place of worship, other. What do you want to be sure to say? How to start. Here are some things you could say to break the ice. I need your help with something. Remember how someone in the family died? Was it a good death or a hard death? How will yours be different? I was thinking about what happened to Aunt Susie, and it made me realize, even though I'm okay right now, I'm worried something might happen and I want to be prepared. I need to think about the future. Will you help me? I just answered some questions about how I want the end of my life to be. I want you to see my answers, and I'm wondering what your answers would be. Here are some questions to consider. 
when you think about the last phase of your life, what's most important to you? How would you like this phase to be? Do you have any particular concerns about your health, about the last phase of your life? What affairs do you need to get in order or talk to your loved ones about? Personal finances or property or relationships? Who do you want or not want to be involved in your care? Who would you like to make decisions on your behalf if you're not able to? This person is your health care proxy. Would you prefer to be actively involved in decisions about your care? Or would you rather have your doctors do what they think is best? Are there any disagreements or family tensions that you're concerned about? Are there important milestones you'd like to be there for if possible? The birth of a grandchild, your 80th birthday? Where do you want or not want to receive care? Home? Nursing facility? Hospital? Are there kinds of treatment you would want or not want? Resuscitation if your heart stops? Breathing machine? Feeding tube? When would it be okay to shift from a focus on curative care to a focus on comfort care alone? This list doesn't cover everything you may need to think about, but it's a good place to start. Talk to your doctor or nurse if you'd like them to suggest more questions to talk about. Remember, be patient. Some people may need a little more time to think. You don't have to steer the conversation. Just let it happen. And don't judge. A good death means different things to different people. Nothing is set in stone. You and your loved ones can always change your minds as circumstances change. Every attempt at the conversation is valuable. This is the first of many conversations. You don't have to cover everyone or everything right now. Now just go for it. Each conversation will empower you and your loved ones. You are getting ready to help each other live and die in a way that you choose. Step four, keep going. Congratulations, you have had the conversation, hopefully the first of many. You can use the following questions to collect your thoughts about how your first talk went and to think about what you'd like to talk about in future conversations. Is there something you need to clarify that you feel was misunderstood or misinterpreted? Who do you want to talk to next time? Are there people who should hear things at the same time, like siblings who tend to disagree? How did this conversation make you feel? What do you want to remember? What do you want your loved ones to remember? What do you want to make sure to ask or talk about next time? Now that you have had the conversation, you're ready to think about completing two important legal documents to make sure your wishes are clearly stated and respected when the time comes. First, Choose a healthcare proxy. A healthcare proxy, also known as Adorable Power of Attorney for Healthcare, is a legal document in which you appoint another person, a proxy or agent, to express your wishes and make healthcare decisions for you if you cannot speak for yourself. Choose someone who knows your wishes well, a person you trust to speak for you if you are not able to speak for yourself. Second, Complete an advanced directive. An advanced directive, also known as a living will, is a legal document in which you state your wishes regarding end-of-life medical care, including the types of treatments you do and do not want, in case you are no longer able to make decisions or communicate your wishes. Note, this is different from your last will and testament, which is used to distribute assets. Every state has its own advanced directive forms. See the Medicare website for more information. Thank you for listening. Remember, you can download the Conversation Starter Kit free on our website, theconversationproject.org. You can even fill it in and share it with a family member or loved one.